Welcome, welcome back to this new video. This time we're going to continue talking about Air Marshal. Um, in this case, Air Marshal in Cisco Meraki. So um, this is the part two of our video. And the part one was uh, simply uh, what Air Marshal is, how do you find it, how do you use it, why would you use it, so on and so forth. And in, in this video, we're going to go deeper into uh, implementing Air Marshal, right? So remember that to uh, implement Air Marshal, you would go to um, uh, Warlex, Air Marshal, and this is where you're going to see here. Um, also remember that uh, if, you, if you reference back to uh, the first video, I talked about uh, the different type of access points that you can implement Air Marshal. Uh, the n most uh, powerful access point in, in Cisco, in Meraki, uh, they have a dedicated radio to do air marshal. If you have only a dual band radio without a dedicated radio for that, you can still implement air marshal, but at the time you implement it, that access point is not going to be able to provide Wi Fi services to clients. So, uh, you can reference video one for, for those details. So in this case, when you uh, implement it, the system automatically is going to go into action and it's going to see if it detects any rogue SSIDs in your network, right? And again, this is uh, my uh, lab test environment. All these are my networks. So I could do uh, whatever I want with them but if you are in a production environment just pay attention to what you're doing because you may be able to uh, create a denial of service to uh, one of your neighboring's uh, uh, Wi-Fi networks so we'll talk about it in in the, in the next couple of minutes so in this case remember rogue SSIDs are SSIDs that are coming out of your LAN so if you work in a large uh, corporate environment uh, or like for instance at a college campus or a school that you have many different buildings and you know you have you don't have the ability of of seeing what's happening everywhere um, this is a great solution for you because if anyone connects an, an access point to your LAN or they connect, let's say, a, a router, a Wi-Fi router, or anything to expand your your land and create a, an unauthorized uh, Wi-Fi network. That's going to be detect detected here. That's what rogue SSIDs are, are lands that are coming are not lands are Wi-Fi networks coming out of your land, right? And then you have other SSIDs that are Wi-Fi networks that are not coming out of your LAN. It's just what the access points detect and see in the vicinities. So let's just concentrate on rogue SSIDs because uh, that's one of the things that's going to be more relevant to you. Um, the default state when the system starts scanning and providing information is on uncontained, right? Like all the SSIDs that are going to be detected, all these networks are going to show as uncontained. And uncontained means simply that they have been detected, no, a no action has been taken. So once the networks are uncontained, you can move forward into contain them, right? And um, when you contain the network, what's going to happen is that the, um, the the air marshal radios are going to prevent clients from associating to the rogue SSIDs. And if they do associate, it's going to send deauthentication packets to remove them off of that network. So uh, let's do a, a quick example here. Um, let me come to my uh, laptop. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you, right? So uh, this is a packet capture that I did on uh, on channel 44 because that's where the um, 
I know the uh, the SSIDs are coming. Uh, the rogues SSIDs are coming out of these access points, and of course, if you are um, uh, one of the network security engineers for the company, you might not know where you know like these rogues SSRDs are coming from. I'm just showing you this, you know, to make it simple um, to see how it works. But you know, there are many different ways that you can know what channels those SSIDs are using so you can do the capture. You could either do a, uh, a, a, a Wi-Fi scanning or, or use a protocol analyzer to, to find that information. So as you can see here, uh, this is an Apple computer that I have and it's been trying to associ associate to uh, the, the SSIDs, right? Let me go up a couple of packets. Uh, right here, you're gonna see that it's sending the probe request, getting the probe response. Then it's you no know, right here. It's transmitting data. So let me go down. Oh, uh, this is just data, ax data, and all this is happening in a matter of seconds. Right? We do see a lot of packets, but this just takes seconds for all that to uh, to be captured. Uh, so when the client is in the process of authenticating and associating and then starts, you know, the, the network process of trying to connect to the network, when it's going through that and we have Air Marshal enabled, Air Marshal is going to send the authentication packets to the um, rogue SSIDs from different sources. It's going to send it from, it's going to spoof the MAC address of the client, it's going to spoof the MAC address of the um, rogue access points to de-associate any connection that is happening right now, or at the moment I should say, and this is what you're going to see here, right? You're going to see a lot of uh, management de-authentication de packets going, and that is, and then once it the authenticates, the, the, the client automatically tries to connect because it lost the connection and is trying to reestablish the connection one more time. That's what you're seeing here. Uh, well, this is a disassociation, but you're going to see them the auth, the auth, the auth. And then it's going to start sending. Uh, I stopped it right here. Uh, but once it is the authenticated the client is going to try it's going to try to um, associate one more time so you're going to start seeing uh, probe request you're going to start seeing probe response the association requests and responses and then you're going to see this process of the authentication again so that's what you that's what would happen if you contained the ssid right uh, Air Marshal is going to prevent any successful authentication and association, and if it happens, it's going to immediately kick them out of the network. So it is very useful, right? So how do you go from uncontained to contained? You simply select the SSID that you want to contain, or the SSIDs, and then you would go to Edit, and then you have the option of containing that from here. Now, if you have a uh, contained SSID that you have verified that is a legit SSID uh, and you want to allow access to it, you simply select that SSID, come here and you uncontain. And then when you do that, you have the option of uncontaining uh, per SSID or per BSSID. If you do the SSID, only that SSID is going to be contained or uncontained, whichever action you are taking. And if you do the BSSID, is whatever SSID coming out of that BSSID. Remember, the BSSID is simply the MAC address of the access point that it broadcasts in the SSIDs. So if you take any action at the BSSID level, it means that it's going to apply to all the SSIDs coming out of that access point. Uh, so that's what you can do. And then um, if you come down here, you also have the option of, well, I showed this on the first video, but let's go over this one more time. 
Uh, when you enable AR Marshall, you have the option of allow clients to connect to the rogue SSID. Uh, this is a good option if you're doing monitoring. If you're doing this for the first time, you want to make sure that you monitor the network first before you make any harsh changes. Or you have the option of blocking clients from connecting to the SSIDs. Uh, that's what I'm doing uh, right now. This is the default behavior. So which means that any client that tries to connect to any of these SSIDs is going to get kicked out of the network. Um, and then if you did this, allow this, then you'll have the option of creating a blacklist of SSIDs. If you allow the clients to connect to the blocked SSIDs, you have the option of uh, creating a blacklist of SSIDs that you don't allow the clients to connect. And you could do that just by adding this and you can choose um, the MAC address or or the um, the name of the SSIDs or whatever you want to use. You could add it right here. And that um, it contains keyword, let's say that I do um, school, right? And then you do this. Uh, or you have the option if you are doing this of blocking all clients from connecting to the SSIDs, you have the option of whitelisting SSIDs. So whichever um, way works best for your environment and your situation, uh, Meraki Air Marshal, Air Marshal gives you the tools to implement a good solution for your environment. So let's say that I'm saying, you know what, like I'm blocking all clients from connecting to the SSIDs, but there's one SSID that I really want them to connect and that is called Phi Y. So you do that, you save that. So all those SSIDs are going to be blocked except this one. And you can also set alerting system on this. So if this SSID, if this SSID is detected and you have some type of alerting system on your Cisco Meraki configuration, be it that you are sending the alert to a syslog or you're getting notifications by email, uh, that you'll get a notification when that happens. Uh, something else that I want to show you uh, quickly here before we end the video, uh, I'm going to create one more video. Uh, on this topic because there's a lot of uh, a lot of information to uh, to cover it um, is that if you go to other SSIDs what other SSIDs are are SSIDs that are being detected by your access points but they are not necessarily connected to your local LAN which is normal right in in Wi-Fi you have the signal from different networks traveling over the air so uh, you have different access points detecting uh, the um, SSIDs from other networks that don't even belong to you. So that's what other SSIDs are. And you can also um, take action on these other SSIDs. And you have to be careful though. These are not rogue SSID, meaning they are not part of your network, but they are being detected by the access points. Uh, you can, if you would like, uh, and you have to be very careful with this, uh, there may be legal implications if you block a network that does not belong to you, right? Because basically you're going to be performing a denial of service on that network. So these are my networks too, um, co coming out of a uh, ubiquity access points that I have. Uh, in this case, I can select the uh, other SSIDs option and I could um, also apply the containment action to, to them, right? So I'm going to contain by SSID, confirm, and if you see, let me save this. Then I'm going to come here to configure. And you're going to see that I'm blocking also these um, SSID uh, uh, clients from connecting to that SSID, even though that SSID does not belong to my network. So 
I again like this is my network. This this like by my network and means it belongs to me. It's not physically the same network as the Moroccan network, but I I can also take action on that. So that's one of the ways that you would implement AR Marshall to secure your network to provide secu security services to your organization. Um, there are many different ways you could do at the uh, Wi-Fi and at the LAN level. And I just mentioned one of them right here. To be honest with you, one of the most effective ways to avoid these rug SSIDs is to, uh, you know, have some type of um, port level security on your switches. So you can only, uh, you know, either you disable them, turn them off, or you only allow certain type of MAC addresses to connect to to the um to the switches or maybe implement 802.1x at the switch level so there are many different ways you could ev even prevent this from happening but i know that every network is different but uh, again this is uh, air marshall on cisco meraki uh dealing with rogue ssids uh, i'll create a new video later to talk about spoof and malicious broadcast and all these options and how air marshal helps you prevent all these um, wi-fi security risks again this is a uh, free feature of cisco meraki you do not need any extra licensing for this to function so i hope this helped if you like this video just uh, Give, you know, like just click on the like button and subscribe to my channel so you'll, you'll be notified of new videos when I create them. Uh, you have a great day. Bye.